Okay, bismillah. Assalamualaikum and good uh, evening. Um, good afternoon actually, sorry. Um, so today is our last class uh, in this semester. Um, the topic is polymer modified bitumen and pavement failures. So in, a, in the previous class, you have uh, seen how uh, thickness of layer pavement layers are being designed. And in some of the options, uh, you are given the a possibility of using polymer modified bitumen uh, for your pavement, uh, especially for highly uh, high volume uh, roads. <clears throat> okay, so for those types of pavement, the bitumen is a special blend, not the usual. Uh, typical bitumen 60 over 70 or 80 over 100 uh, type bitumen. So we normally modify uh, our bitumen using three types of uh, materials. The first uh, type is modification using chemicals and, uh, and second one is using polymers and the third one is using crumb rubbers. There are many, many other, other types of uh, modification but the, these are the three main types of modifications. So in chemical modification, you, we usually, one of the materials that we use is uh, PPA, polyphosphoric acid. Okay. So in this type uh, of bitumen, uh, it is usually uh, mixed with uh, air blown or catalyt catalytically blown uh, bitumen. Lah. Um, polyphosphoric acid consists of high, higher molecular uh, weight species uh, with a distribution of chain length. So it, it actually modifies the, 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 the chemicals, the chemistry of the bitumen. Okay, so there, there are two types of uh, acid, uh, 105 and 115. So this is, um, I haven't used this acid before. I think Uni 10, they have they have uh, tried using this, but in they, they use this in combination with another uh, additive. Okay, uh, this type of acid actually increases the PG temperature grade. So PG temperature grade, PG grade is another method of uh, another standard actually of classifying uh, bitumen. Uh, in our previous class, I have mentioned that that the the usual method that we use to classify our bitumen in Malaysia is using penetration grade okay where it can be the grade penetration grade 80 over 100 or 60 over 70 okay but uh, there in America uh, and also also in some some companies in Malaysia they use PG grade this is performance grade uh, bitumen so for example PG 58 to uh, dash apa tu? 28. So it means that it is performance grade to be used at maximum temperature, pavement temperature of uh, 58 degrees and the lowest temperature uh, recommended using that bitumen is negative 28. Okay. So in this case, PG 58, 28, if you uh, modify further with PPA, it can uh, give you a grade of uh, uh, what <coughs> Performance grade 6428, meaning that the higher temperature is uh, increased by six degrees. Okay, so it increased the PG grade, uh, the higher PG grade. So typically, the amount of uh, uh, PPA that we use is between 0 0.5 to uh, 1 percent. Okay, so with that amount, it normally increases the PG grade uh, by one grade. Okay, so the second type of uh, modification, this is the most common one, uh, are using polymer modifiers. Okay, there are three types uh, that are normally used: SB, which is uh, styrene butadiene, and then SBS, styrene butadiene, styrene, and SBR, styrene, uh, styrene butadiene uh, rubber. So they are mo mostly actually around the world, uh, not just in the US. Okay, uh, it gives excellent performance from case studies normally conducted uh, uh, 
around the world pun okay long success uh, history since 70s in the europe and it produced a stable compatible system easily to use uh, in today's construction uh, process uh, practices so what i mean by stable okay i'll show you later lah. okay a stable mix all right so how do we mix uh, this uh, chemicals or apa tu, modifiers polymers with um, bitumen we start with the neat bitumen okay so bitumen that has not been modified either 80 80 100 or 60 70 uh, we heat it up okay normally usually um, the up to the temperature of 150 to 160 then we dissolve uh, and cross-link SBS molecules okay so you pour in the uh, SBS this is its SBS lah. <coughs> So you can mix it either using high shear mixer okay, or a normal prop prop propeller mixer. Okay. So among the factors that will uh, affect the performance of your mix is the type of mixing, reaction time, meaning how long do you mix uh, the, the polymer with bitumen, uh, constant agitation and constant heat. Okay. Uh, how, how frequent, how do you actually use the propeller if you are using propeller mixer lah. is it constant agitation or uh, constant heat okay. the heat must be consistent lah, meaning um, test of properties we, we test for performance properties uh, the homogeneity and stable stability um, it is uh, more or less related lah, homogeneous and stable stable it means actually um, when you have mixed the, the polymer inside the vitamin and you heat it up and leave it uh, for some time the particles of the the, the the unblended the particles of the polymer does not uh, settle too much to the bottom of the barrel okay if the tendency to separate between the polymer and the bitumen is high okay so meaning that you cannot mix the bitumen and store you need to mix and immediately use because if you store it if you mix it is hot and then you just leave it there so the polymer will settle to the bottom of the barrel. So when you use the, the barrel, the bitumen in the barrel, uh, the mix is not homogeneous. Okay, you get one, one patch of, okay, very thick with uh, polymer and the other part is very uh, low viscosity. So typically using SBS, if it is milled in high shear uh, mixing mixer, uh, the distribution of the particles uh, is very good so this is uh, an example of a, a microscopic photo of a bitumen mixed with SBS this is early in the process meaning that you heat up the bitumen and then you put the uh, SBS in after maybe 10 minutes uh, you take a sample and you can see the blending the homogeneity of uh, of the mix is quite low Okay. After some time, you can see that it started to uh, even up okay. the, 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 the particles there. And then it becomes better if you add compet uh, compatibilizer or cross-linking agent. There are numerous uh, types of cross-linking agent. So this is another type of chemical that you add into your mix where it will help uh, the dispersal and the blending of the SBS to the uh, to the vitamin. Okay. And it also creates chemical bonds. Uh, so completed cross-linking meaning that it is entirely uh, digested. Lah. Okay, the polymer has uh, been entirely digested. Okay. Uh, so the benefits of PMA you can see that uh, addition of rubbery materials allow asphalt to recover after loading actually for sbs if you look at it it does not look like rubber it looks like uh, pellets of plastic it's just white pellets of plastic okay, but uh, the, the component is actually more or less plastic lah. Okay, in this case rubbery if you actually add rubber to it eh, or as you are you, you are using sbr terrain with the rubber so rubbery substance allows the asphalt to recover after loading so the recovery uh, is able to with, 
expand a uh, higher number of apa tu, repetition, load repetition. So you can see from this graph, the PG64 not modified uh, with SBS here. The deformation uh, occurs in this uh, creep test actually, occurs very early, 150 seconds. And the PG7622 uh, modified by SBS here, the deform deformation is, it took a very long time for it to increase. So the benefits uh, of PMA uh, improve resistance to rutting, okay, uh, reduce fatigue tracking, and mitigate thermal tracking and resist top-down tracking. Basically, it improves tracking and rutting. Right? These are the main uh, properties. Okay, I'll explain to you later towards the end of this lecture what are uh, what it means by rutting and uh, fatigue tracking and, and all this, and then improve durability with. Thicker aspart binder film. Uh, when you in, uh, to modify the bitumen with uh, polymer, the viscosity of the bitumen will increase. And when it increases, uh, the, uh, the aspart film that coats the, the, the aggregate is going to be thicker. Okay, recall last lecture. Uh, at the beginning of last lecture, I have explained to you how. Uh, thicker asphalt binder film will uh, affect the optimum binder content of uh, a pavement. So, subsequently, when you have a thicker asphalt content, you would need a higher as higher asphalt content because you need a lot more uh, bitumen, uh, and also thicker asphalt binder film will actually reduce moisture damage because it is very diff difficult, uh, more difficult lah for moisture to get into the uh, aggregates. So this is an example of cycle to failure carried, uh, research carried out by uh, University of Florida. So this is a, a stretch of a test road. Okay, So between this and here, here and here, they, they have used uh, different type of bitumen and this one using different type of bitumen so they, they measure the cycles to failure here okay so very early in the cycle this 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 portion has start to uh, crack so the polymer modified one has better resistance okay the problem is, is it is expensive lah, polymer modified uh, bitumen so this is uh, another test track uh, uh, conducted by NCAT, uh, National uh, for Asphalt uh, Testing, test track. Eh? Uh, so it, it, it uh, their research lah shows that higher asphalt content have a longer, equals to longer pavement life. Okay, uh, of course lah, because if you add more <laughs> of uh, the asphalt, the, the mix is going to be uh, more flex up to more resilient uh, and have high, higher resilience. But if it is too much, then uh, it can cause rutting, meaning that the, the, the surface of the pavement where the tire pass, tire of the vehicles pass, will have a deflection. So that is rutting. So PMA is able to resist rutting and allows uh, higher asphalt content without rutting. Okay. This is a trade-off. Okay. You can, you, you'll be able to use higher amount of uh, bitumen, but if it is still too much, okay, doesn't matter if it is uh, polymer modified or non-polymer modified, if it is too much uh, asphalt, too much bitumen, uh, the rutting will occur. Okay. Uh, so this is the, this, this test track here. One build and design asphalt concrete using PG6722. The other one, uh, apa nama, using a polymer modified bitumen. And the result shows that the PMA section have less rutting. Okay. So the durability of asphalt content, meaning that it resists uh, the attack of water, actually. This is another uh, useful feature. Lah for asphalt, uh, polymer modified asphalt. So by increasing asphalt content by 0.5%, the thickness of the binder thickness 
uh, increase by three to four microns. So thicker film thickness typically leads to better aspect aggregate adhesion and higher uh, tensile strength ratio. Tensile strength ratio meaning that uh, you test this sample. This is Marshall cake, uh, Marshall sample. You test it uh, in a normal situation. The other sample of the same property, you soak it in hot water for a few hours and then test it. So the ratio between the modif uh, the, the the one the sample that is being tested not being subjected to hot water and the other one that is subjected to hot water is the ratio the tensile strength ratio okay you test it for tensile strength lah. okay so summary uh what uh, do polymer modified asphalt do it improve uh rutting uh, improve fatty cracking improve low temperature cracking okay this that we don't have this problem now because we don't have uh, low temperatures but in very cold areas if the uh the, the the temperature of the road is too low uh, bitumen has the tendency to crack okay it's like ice lah. and uh, you smash it and it will crack so it also has a uh, top-down cracking less top-down cracking uh, improved durability okay so this is the summary that uh, what we have uh, discussed earlier so enhanced performance of PMA, uh, 25 to 100% increase in service life and 3 to 10 years increase in service life in terms of years. Lah. So, the problem, uh, this is, okay, this is not alternatives actually, the topic here is, uh, Oh, sorry, eh? uh, this is not, this is still SBS. Mistake here. Okay, so polymer modified asphalt uh, are typically cross link system. Okay, SBS lah, SBS polymer modified. So it is contract contractor friendly because it has a terminal blend, meaning that once you blend it, you can store it. It does not require agitation, meaning that when you are transferring it, to the plant or to the site, it does not uh, require uh, mixing, lah. does not require propellers. Storage stable, meaning that it, it does not separate. No major changes to HMA plant operation. So this is a very good property lah. Okay. for plants, uh, bitumen plants to mix SBS, they do not need to uh, change the uh, setup of the machinery. They can just put it into the mix. Okay. Other types, for example, rubber. Lah. Rubber is very sticky, so the plants need to be modified. So they cannot use the same setup as uh, uh, SBS. So no major changes to hot mix, asphalt, lay down and compaction. So basically similar with uh, typical uh, HMA. So in the US, they have developed specifications specifically for SBS. So alternative modification system may require changes for both agencies and contractors. Meaning that if somebody come up with a different uh, recipe uh, in mixing for, uh, SBS, they need uh, changes. Lah. They need to update their uh, specification to include uh, the, the newer specification, the newer finding. So alternatives to SBS polymer, to SBS latex. Uh, meaning that it is butadine, butadine based polymer. However, this type of motivation, it is not storage stable and must be blended at a HMA plant, specialized actually, specialized and HMA plant. So non-butadine uh, polymers, I don't, I have, I don't have any uh, <coughs> experience using this, this type of modifications actually. <coughs> we have ethylene thermo, uh, terpo, terpolymer and also ethyl vinyl acetate. So it is mainly used in warm climates and blended with SBS in cold climates. But, but I, I've never used it and I have not, never met anybody that has used it. <laughs> All right, and then at PPA lah. But PPA in, uh, in this case, okay, is an extender, not an alternative. So it is blended with SBS, okay, to reduce the percentage of SBS that is being used. 
uh, I've asked to purchase uh, 25 kilos of SBS for our research. It is very difficult to get. I have to ask <coughs> a, a number of companies. They don't have it. And I finally get it. And for the, that 25 kilos, the cost is uh, 1,400 ringgit. So I, I'm guessing it may be, uh, if it is bought by suppliers, the cost is going to be less, but still 25 kilos is just, is 1,000 ringgit, more than 1,000 ringgit. It's very expensive. Huh? Okay. So the other alternative to SBS polymer is using rubber. <clears throat> okay, using uh, ground tire rubber, meaning that the old tires, uh, okay, that has been used up. Uh, we, we can grind it up and use the rubber particles to modify um, our bitumen. So usually the percentage is between 18 to 22. Uh, I personally haven't used this much uh, percent, uh, percent percentage of rubber into bitumen. Uh, the highest that I have used is 12. If it is higher than 12, what I've found if with no other modifications, the percentage of optimum binder content is going to be very high. Even at 12%, uh, it's almost 7% optimum binder content. When I mentioned this to contractors, they say, oh, no, 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 7% is too expensive, too, too much, too much vitamin. Okay. So no cross-linking occurs. Okay, this is, this is in normal uh, rubber modified asphalt lah. <coughs> no cross-linking, meaning that the rubber particles in earlier stage, it will be <coughs> suspended in the bitumen. But if you keep it there, it will settle to the bottom. So it, so it is not storage stable. Uh, typically, it is not a terminal blend process. <coughs> Sorry. Meaning that it is not storage stable lah. Okay, not a terminal blend uh, process, meaning that it is not storage stable. But rubber cannot be PG graded in a meaningful way because <coughs> um, the particles of the rubber uh, normally will cause the, the, the result to go a little bit haywire uh, if the particles is, uh, are big. So the size of the particles usually uh, is between uh, 250 microns to 400 microns. That is 0 0.25 millimeter and 0 0.4 uh, millimeter. So recent research uh, have noted that they have started to use finer uh, apa nama, rubber particles. So I have studied in, in my, my PhD, I've studied uh, scrum rubber modified asphalt actually. So I have found that we need to at least use uh, 80 mesh rubber, meaning that the size is 0 0.1 mm. 0.2 mm or less. Uh, that uh, type of uh, mix produces a slightly, uh, not slightly, a, a better mix lah compared to uh, bitumen that has been modified by uh, coarser uh, bitumen, apa tu, rubber, rubber particle size. Uh, okay, tak apa. I will skip this one because the points here uh, has already been covered here. Dan buat dua kali pula. Tak apalah nak cerita pun boleh juga. <coughs> so it is a proprietary process meaning that the 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 recipe is quite can be quite unique uh, compared to from one authority to another authority. So again between 10 to 12 uh, can be added at high temperature and process with high sh shear milling. I think there's a mistake there. 18 to 22 is quite impossible. So this is this should be 10 to 12 actually. 18 to 22 is impossible. Lah. So in my opinion, impossible. Unless you modify it with other chemicals, then may maybe. Okay, so you can add chem chemical stabilizer um, to stabilize the system or you can mix it with SBS. So this uh, tire rubber contains other materials such as carbon black and calcium, calcium carbonate. 
So meeting the solubility specification may be an issue. When I first get into the blending of uh, rubber into bitumen, this is one of the problem lah. It will never stabilize. So currently I'm kind of conducting one research lah, with where your, your, some of your friends are involved in. So we are doing the terminal blend, meaning that uh, the, the rubber modified bitumen that we produce is going to be storage stable. There are other methods that, is, that people have been used to stabilize uh, uh, bitumen, but we are using a different approach. Lah. But the problem is the temperature is still very high. Okay, uh, The rubber is mixed uh, more than 200 degrees. Uh, typically, it is being, being mixed uh, at around 160, 180 degrees. So the, the, uh, the increase in temperature of blending is not desirable actually because it consumes lots of uh, energy. Okay, the other problem is that the settlement of inert materials in contractors tank. Okay, some, some contractors or some uh, plants may not want to actually uh, process rubber, rubberized bitumen because they don't want to uh, cause their, their, their plants to be stuck with rubber okay, because the, the mix is very thick. Okay, so this is cannot be graded under current DSR test. So difficult, uh, like I mentioned. Lah. Another thing is sometimes if you are using uh, coarser, larger rubber particles, when you test it for penetration test, uh, the, the result can vary quite significantly because in one test, it may be the, the, the needle punctures on the, in the bitumen and it hits the rubber particle. And in another test, it does not puncture any does not hit any rubber particles. So the, the result can be quite confusing. That is in the case if you are using uh, larger rubber particles. Lah. But if it is uh, lower, rubber to smaller, then it's okay. So two approach of using uh, rubber mixtures uh, in asphalt is actually using wet process and dry process. In wet process, you are actually mixing the rubber particles in the bitumen. In the dry process, you do not mix it with, with the bitumen but you use it as a replacement of uh, aggregate. Okay. So in this notes, we, are, we will only cover wet process. Okay. For rubber component that is more than 50%, uh, I just think I set a point like So it is more towards rubber bitumen system, meaning to say here, it is not uh, stable lah, actually. If it's more than 50%, to get a mix that is stable, uh, a mix that uh, is uh, terminally blend, is quite impossible. But when uh, it is less than uh, 15%, typically 10%, rubber it can be dissolved in uh, bitumen and it can perform like other type of polymer modified binder. So this is uh, quite new. Uh, so we, it is still uh, under re many research. The terminal blend of uh, rubberized uh, bitumen. So the standard that we use is ASTM B8. So the, the definition here, a blend of bitumen where uh, the reclaimed tire rubber and certain additives is at least 15% by the weight of total blend and has reacted in hot bitumen. Okay. The trick, if you want to increase the use of to percentage of rubber, you want to use higher rubber percentage, is you, you use uh, larger particles. If you use smaller particles, you will not, you never ever be able to achieve 15%. But you, if you really need to use 15%, you need to use uh, larger particles. Maybe uh, around one millimeter, something like that. The thing, uh, when you use larger particles, the absorption of uh, apa tu, the, the apa tu, lighter fractions here in the asphalt is less because the surface area of the rubber particles to absorb the light, these lighter fractions is apa tu, smaller compared to finer rubber particles. The thing is, when you add rubber particles into the bitumen, lighter fractions and asphalt things will be absorbed into this rubber uh, 
apa tu rubber particles so if you have finer one it the the, the absorption will be uh, very efficient so it becomes very thick because the lighter fraction has been absorbed by rubber but if the rubber particles is very big the efficiency of uh, absorption between uh, of the light fraction into the rubber is not so good so less uh, apa tu, this light fraction is being absorbed therefore the viscosity is lower so this is the um, when you add very coarse rubber rice bitumen lah. here in this case this is an unmodified base bitumen but if you mix a uh, finer rubber particles very fine uh, it can look like this okay the rubber rice bitumen in this case this is at least 0 0.5 or 0 0.4 uh, mm the rubber size and it's definitely going to be about 15 percent lah when the bitumen has looked like this then the, the, the amount of bitumen is very high so the production route uh some waste tires bags of from rubber i think anas has went to one of your friends anas has went to the plant in Tlang, uh to to get this uh bags of rubber from rubber okay so it is an industry yeah, and I'm not sure we have lots of plants uh, processing uh, old, old tires yeah, and I think it's, it is a very good and sustainable uh, industry actually. So you get the crumb rubber, you blend it with asphalt uh, and clean number four and then mix it with aggregates. Number five, aggregates heated first before it is mixed uh, with rubberized bitumen and number six, asphalt rubber blend is added to the aggregate and it is immediately uh, brought to the site uh, so you cannot put it in drums and store it because it is not storage stable so you process and then put it in the uh, tanks and immediately uh, mix it with, with uh, aggregate and immediately use it for pavement okay this is uh, clean with benefits of uh, asphalt rubber uh, improve durability, uh, improve resistance to surface uh, cracking, reduce uh, temperature susceptibility, meaning that uh, the the fluctuation between temperature, we don't have this problem. Lah. Okay, the fluctuation between high temperature and low temperature, uh, the, the effect of that fluctuation is better uh, with uh, rubberized asphalt. So it also, it also improve resistance to rutting. So this is the comparison uh, of conventional uh, versus rubberized asphalt. Okay, this is another comparison in Arizona of the costing, maintenance cost of a pavement that has been constructed by rubberized asphalt compared uh, to a typical uh, overlay. Okay, the barriers. Uh, the education in mixed design specification and quality control not many people is able to uh, to come up with the mixed design for uh rubberized bitumen the specification uh, the local specification if you go through different specifications from different authority even in this the us in the same country the the, the variance is very high okay, one authority say maximum Eight percent. The other authority will say maximum uh, twelve percent. So the temperature that uh, they, they instruct, the the specification instructs the contractor to mix can also vary very significantly. So it's uh, it's very difficult lah, okay, to really understand what's going on because the 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 quality of the mix is highly dependent on the type of rubber dependent of the, the temperature of the mix the duration of the mix everything okay so uh, to get one uniform design is very difficult and also quality control because it is being mixed and then immediately uh laid into the the pavement the quality control can be quite difficult okay. because you cannot you can, can only test after it has become into pavement if you can have uh, store it in barrels then you can check and you can check uh, take some sample and check the quality of barrel a uh, 
variable number one. Okay, you, and then you have variable variable one hundred. You take some sample and then test another specimen. So quality control is difficult, more difficult lah with uh, rubber rubber stock. Very temperature sensitive. Uh, if you want to store it, you need to be stored in hot uh, in hot mix, <laughs> in hot barrels, and it should be less than two two days. Okay. So you cannot work it with a uh, normally normal hand work lah. Okay. Weather dependent surface temperature uh, higher than 13 degrees and no rainy days. No rainy days means any type of pavement pun no, no rainy days lah. Okay, doesn't doesn't matter what sort of super pavement, super bitumen that you use. If you lay it on rainy days, the pavement is not going to last. That's the uh, the rule that has been laid by God. <laughs> okay. Nobody will be able to get a good pavement uh, when paving on rainy days. And the other thing is the surface temperature is higher than 13 degrees. Lah. So this is not relevant to us because we constantly have uh, our surface temperature is more than 13 degrees. Emission and odor, the smell of the rubber can be quite uh, annoying. Okay. And it, it is probably a hazard as well. Initial construction cost, uh, the cost lies in the, the, the rubber itself is not expensive because it is recycled from old tires. But to process it is very difficult uh, to have a specialized plant and all that. Next segment of our uh, lecture is uh, pavement failures, construction and maintenance. So several types of uh, several uh, failure types here. Uh, fatty cracking, uh, also known as alligator cracking. Leading block packing, polish aggregate, potholes, raveling, and rutting. So let's go uh, one by one. Uh, fatigue cracking, uh, a series of interconnected cracks caused by the fatigue. Fatigue, apa? Kalau dalam in, uh, in Malay is letih uh, ya, penat. Meaning that it has reached the design life. Okay, where the bitumen has become brittle or the there's problem on the stabilized uh, base. So normally it is being, it happens due to repeated loading, repeated traffic loading, meaning that it has uh, reached its design life. Lah. So in thin pavement, cracking initiates at the bottom of the layer, where the tensile stress is the highest, then propagates to the surface as one or more longitudinal cracks. This is commonly referred to as bottom up or classical fatigue cracking. It have occurs, uh, it starts from the bottom. If you remember uh, in previous lecture, the highest stress is actually 0 0.9 uh, times, it occurs 0 0.9 times of the diameter of the tire footprint. That is the highest stress and uh, alligator cracking started start from that layer. So it goes bottom up. It does not, uh, it does not travel from uh, top to bottom. So in thick pavements, the crack most likely initiate from the top. Okay. So after the, the loading, the longitudinal cracks connect, forming many sided uh, sharp angled pieces. So this is for thick pavement. Eh? Just now it's for thin pavement. Uh, the cracks connect, forming a many sided angles pieces that develop into a pattern resembling uh, the back of an alligator or crocodile. So the problem is with this type of uh, failure, uh, it is an indicator of structural failure. Uh, cracks allow moisture infiltration, roughness and further deteriorate into a pothole. All right. So possible causes. Uh, decrease in pavement loading characteristic, loss of base, meaning that the, the under, underlying uh, layers has problems. Lah. Increase on loading, okay. uh, inadequate structural design, and also uh, poor construction. Okay, this is normal. Lah. Repair, fatigue crack pavement should be investigated to determine the root cause of the failure. Any investigation should uh, involve digging a pit or coring the pavement. So this is uh, the normal uh, procedure that uh, we use. We need to have a sample, pouring sample from the uh, uh, in, from the area. 
when I started working here and one of the projects that I was involved is uh, monitoring uh, the pouring process of a pavement. I think that's the only <laughs> pavement project that I've, that I've uh, involved in. Uh. Okay, so we go to Jalan Gelang Lama um, after midnight with our team and then we start pouring the samples. Uh. You can see actually the 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 depth of overlays in Jalan Kelanama is very deep. Okay, you can see layer upon layer upon layer of uh, pavement because it's a very old road. So you can see actually the, it's like uh, apa tu, geology wonder. Lah. It's not geology but it's almost like ge a geology wonder. Different layers of pavement. Okay, so once the characteristic alligator pattern is apparent, Repair by crack sealing is generally effective, ineffective. Okay, so you need to really treat any cracks as soon as possible. Once it has become uh, alligator cracking, then the, the pavement is good as gone. Lah. So fatigue crack repair generally falls into two categories. Uh, small uh, localized fatigue crack indicate of uh, apa tu, sub, loss of subgrade support, problem with the subgrade. So you need to remove the crack area, then dig and replace the poor subgrade. So the treatment for uh, pavement failures depends on the type of failures. And you need to identify the source of the problem correctly. If the problem is the subgrade, then you need to dig until you reach the subgrade and then repair from there. Large fatigue crack areas indicative for general structure failure. So you can place an HME overlay over the entire pavement structure and it must be strong enough to carry the anticipated loading because the under, underlying fatigue crack pavement was most likely contribute little or no strength. So you have you need to overlay it with uh, a stronger uh, pavement. So this is an example of bad fatigue packing, terribly uh, fatigue road combined with rutting actually. And this is the fatigue cracking from age failure. So in this case, it is fatigue, fatigue but it originates from the subgrade. Okay. So you, you need to actually repair uh, to the subgrade. This is in theory, uh, but I haven't seen anybody actually repair pavement dig up until the uh, subgrade. Bleeding is a film of asphalt binder on the pavement surface, meaning that the you can see the, the surface of the pavement is almost shiny because uh, bitumen rays up to the surface of the road. So the problem with this is loss of skid resistance when wet. Okay, So it's very slippery and dangerous to vehicle. So possible causes is... Uh, Excessive uh, asphalt binder in the hot mix asphalt. Too much bitumen. So you can see the bitumen, the, the aggregate goes down to the mix and then the, bitu the bitumen rays. So it has lots of uh, excess, lah, excess of bitumen. Or it can occur because low air void content. So not enough room for the asphalt to expand during hot weather. So the, the asphalt expand in to the surface of the pavement. So to repair, you can uh, minor bleeding can be corrected by applying coarse sand to blot up the excess asphalt binder. So you just put in sand and maybe uh, roll it a bit so that it will increase the uh, friction of the surface. Major bleeding can be correcting by cutting off excess asphalt with motor grader or removing it with a heat tanner. If the resulting surface is excessively rough, resurfacing may, may be necessary. Ni I tak pernah tengok lah. Uh, cutting off excess asphalt memang tak pernah tengok. Actually, there is very rare lah <laughs> to have uh, too much asphalt. If it is less asphalt, not enough asphalt, then it's, uh, apa tu? Then it's very common because contractor will try to reduce the asphalt content as much as possible. But having too much as well, I have never heard that actually. Okay, but we have a photo proof that it occurs. Okay. 
So this is HMA bleeding from over asphalting to my uh, determine here. Sorry, ini gambar dekat bawah sikit. So this is uh, HMA bleeding eh. Next is block cracking. Interconnected cracks. Uh, this uh, as opposed to alligator cracking, the cracks are very small. The, the pieces are very small. Block cracking are larger uh, uh, cracks lah. Interconnected cracks that uh, divide the pavement into rectangular pieces. So the size is between 0 0.1 meter square to 9 meter square. Larger blocks are generally classified as longitudinal and transverse crack cracking. So this is type, another type of uh, crack lah, in pavement. Block cracking normally occurs over a large portion of pavement area, but sometimes will occur only in non-traffic area. So the problem is it allows uh, moisture infiltration and roughness. So it is being caused by HMA shrinkage and daily temperature uh, cycling. That's why you, you if you see uh, in movies, particularly in the colder regions in the US, they usually have cracks and the, the crack has been sealed with uh, bitumen. So this is uh, caused by daily temperature cycling. Typically caused by an inability of asphalt binder to expand and contract with temperature, temperature cycles because of aging and also poor choice of uh, asphalt binder in the uh, mix design. Okay. Aging meaning that uh, the bitumen has lost its uh, elasticity. Like I mentioned, it is, uh, bitumen is more, more or less like plastic. Lah. Okay, when you leave it into under the uh, under the hot sun, typically it is very flexible. When you leave it long enough under the sun, the volatiles, the volatile components from the plastic will evaporate, and the plastic will become brittle. So the same case happens uh, for bitumen, okay, and that process is known as aging. Uh, poor choice of asphalt binder, meaning that uh, incorrect uh, type of bitumen is being used for uh, that uh, pavement. So the repair strategies depend on if the, the, the crack is uh, not too, too big, it is less than a half an inch, you can crack seal uh, the cracks. Lah. So to prevent moisture uh, travels into the subject through the cracks and further reveling of the crack edges. So you can stop by uh, sealing it with bitumen. So HMA can provide years of satisfactory service after developing small cracks if they are kept sealed. So this is very important. Once you notice it is uh, cracking, you need to seal it very quick before the moisture gets into the cracks. But if the cracks are large, larger than half an inch, you need to remove and replace the pavement layer with an overlay. So you can see here, uh, this is old repairs actually. The pavement has cracked, but you can see here it has been uh, uh, sealed with bitumen, but it, ha it has further cracked again. So meaning that the ceiling here is very old. Okay, the ceiling, uh, up to bitumen seal here is very old so old that the crack has even uh, expanded next is polished aggregate uh, this is due to low quality aggregate lah. there's no other way of uh, explaining it okay, so you need to use a high quality aggregate you need to choose a good quarry uh, you take samples from a quarry and then you test it in the lab what are the properties of the aggregate Different quarry will have different uh, aggregate property. So polish aggregate will cause uh, decreased skip resistance, meaning that the surface uh, texture is very smooth. So it's dangerous lah, for vehicles. So normally to repair this, we apply a skip resistance slurry seal, meaning that you spray a layer of vitamin, like I mentioned uh, in previous class lah. You can apply slurry seal or chip seal. 
keeps you, you spray a layer of bitumen, put aggregate, compact it, and then put another layer. Slurry seal is a a, 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 a mix, mi mixture of bitumen and fine aggregate. And then you overlay, thin overlay on the surface of the pavement. So this, uh, the cost is actually poor, uh, poor apa tu? aggregate property, but it is being accelerated by uh, traffic apl applications here. Repeated traffic applications. So generally, as pavement ages, the protruding rough angular particles becomes for polish. Okay, so this can occur quickly if it is susceptible to abrasion or subjective uh, subject to excessive standard tire wear. So this is true for uh, cold regions, lah, snowy regions. What holds uh, small bolt shaped depressions in the pavement pavement surface that penetrate all the way through the uh, HMA layer? down to the base cost. Usually, uh, it occurs because of uh, crocodile cracking. It starts with crocodile cracking and you don't repair it. So that crocodile cracking, uh, the pieces become dislodged and it becomes a pothole. Once it becomes a pothole and you have water in the pothole, meaning that water will travel until the base cost. Once you have that, you need to remove everything, including the, uh, the, the road base. Replace everything and then uh, repave the pavement. It will not work just to cut one area and then uh, <laughs> patching it uh, just one, that area. So the entire pavement here needs to be uh, revamped. So they generally have sharp edges. Sharp edges meaning that the, the edges here are straight huh? and sharp. The, the edges here. <laughs> and the vertical side near the top of the hole. So yeah, I, mean, I mentioned the vertical actually. What holes are most likely to occur on roads with thin uh, surfaces and seldom occur when the surfacing uh, wearing cost is actually more than 100 mm. So between 25 to 50. But typically this is the, the thickness lah that we use. We Very rare you have a road that has 100 millimeter thickness of uh, uh, HMA because it is uh, quite expensive lah unless it's a highway in. Uh, I mean expressway. Yeah. Okay, problem uh, roughness of course, of course, the problem with pole holes, I think I don't need to explain to you again. <laughs> Serious vehicular damage can result from driving across potholes. So possible causes uh, and result of alligator cracking. The cracking becomes severe, it becomes chunks and it is lodged. Okay. The remaining hole after the pavement chunk is dislodged is called a pole hole. So repair in accordance with patching techniques. You cannot tampa, meaning that you have to remove everything actually until the uh, road base. Leveling. Uh, but if the, the, the pothole is not caused, does not cause by uh, alligator cracking, it could be the, the problem with the subgrade. Okay. So in that case, still you need to cut out that particular area and then improve the, the, the layer, the layers. Okay, reveling. This is the progressive disintegration of the HMA layer from the surface downward as a result of dislodgement of aggregate particles. So you can see here, aggregate particles, the aggregate has, uh, is being loose. It's already loose. So you can sweep it with a broom and get the aggregates. So, so loose, the problem is loose debris on the pavement, roughness and water collecting in the revel locations. Uh, resulting in, in vehicle hydro planning and loss of skip resistance, meaning that water can collect here and then it becomes a layer of, of, of uh, water. Lah. So that will uh, up, uh, decrease the skip resistance. The causes, loss of bond between aggregate particles. So because the aggregate that you use is being covered by dust. Before you mix it uh, with bitumen, the, the, the aggregate is not clean, it is dusty. Or it can be caused, caused by aggregate segregation. Fine particles are missing from the aggregate matrix. So the, if you recall from the previous class, you have different types, different sizes of, uh, in your design, yeah, you have different sizes of uh, aggregate. If you design that incorrectly and the fine particles are too, too low, 
then the asphalt binder is only able to bind the remaining coarse particles at a very few contact points. Okay. So inadequate inadequate compaction. Okay. So the, the, the aggregate will move afterwards after the, the road has been open to the traffic. It is being compacted by traffic. So then it will cause raveling. And then mechanical dislodging by certain type of traffic, studded tires. Okay, we don't have this problem. Lah. Okay. Another, uh, another source of uh, raveling is oil. You can typically see if a spot of road, uh, you have pasar malam, lah, night market. Yeah, they, they used to, they like to fry chicken or anything. Kan? And then the, the oil from that frying uh, pan spills. Okay, even a little bit of oil will cause leveling because oil will dilute the bitumen and this will cause uh, aggregate particles to become loose. So whatever it is, you need to make sure that if you want to open a segment of your road open for, doesn't matter lah pasal Ramadan ke, uh, night market ke, you need to make sure that those people that is uh, to, carrying out their business there, make sure that they are, the oil does not came into contact with the road. Okay. Otherwise, you, you will be destroying the roads. Definitely. Okay, repair. Railroad pavement should be investigated to see the cost. So it can be from uh, what I mentioned here or it can be from Pasar Malam. Lah. <laughs> so if it is Pasar Malam, the, the root cause, you don't, you just make sure that you need to do something. Lah. Yeah, ask the apa to focus to uh, become apa to little bit more civilized lah. Keep it, keep the place clean, something like that. When we say this, people say that I'm anti apa to small small businesses and all that. No, it's not small businesses. I'm all oh, <laughs> very supportive of small businesses. But whatever it is, you need to make sure that what business that you are carrying out, you need to make sure it does not affect public property lah. And because this is being constructed by public money. Okay. Uh, repair. Revel payment should be investigated. Okay. Small localized area of reveling. Uh, remove the revel and patch. Large revel area. Uh, remove the damage payment and overlay. There is no other uh, to, remedy. Okay. Rutting. Surface depression in the wheel path. Uh, pavement of lift shearing may occur along the side of the rut. Ruts are particularly evident after a rain where they are filled with water. So there are two types of rutting, mixed rutting and subgrade rutting. Mixed rutting is because the aggregate does not uh, compacted enough. So the tires of the vehicles will act as uh, compactor. So you can see depressions along the wheel path of the uh, of the vehicles. Subgrade rutting is because the subgrade is not strong enough. So when the subgrade move, the entire layers of the uh, pavement will move. So it becomes rutting from the subgrade. So rutting will be filled with water and this will cause hydro, hydro planning, meaning that the, the, the vehicles will skid over the surface of the road and it becomes very hazardous. So also rutting can, will tend to pull a vehicle towards the right path because there is a deflection again uh, on the surface of the road. So it will pull vehicle wheels into the path. Okay, possible causes, permanent deformation of the pavement layers uh, caused by consolidation or lateral movement of uh, material due to traffic loading. This is what I mentioned just now. Lah. Okay, due to traffic loading. Meaning that the, compact, uh, the, the material, the pavement is not compacted uh, correctly. Specific causes of writing is insufficient uh, compaction of HMA and HMA. Okay, ni yang I mentioned tadi lah. For subgrade writing, uh, okay. Secondly, it can be due to result of in, inadequate pavement structure. So this is in the case of pavement writing. Or it can be an improper mixed design of manufacture. Okay, it is correctly uh, designed, apa to compacted, but the mix is wrong. Okay, where it has excessively high asphalt content. 
Okay, excessive mineral filler and insufficient amount of angular aggregate particles. So this will also uh, cause nothing. So three types of uh, uh, causes lah. Okay, subgrade, uh, improper mix, and also uh, tadi mana tadi? improper compaction. So this is the example of writing. So you can see along the wheel path, there is an, uh, a deflection here. <coughs> In this case here, it is a, uh, this rutting actually can occur because of this alligator cracking. So in this case, this is pure uh, rutting. Because it does not appear to have any other type of failures. It's just rutting. Here you can see the, you have crackings and rutting and all sorts of problems. So this type of payment really need uh, uh, rehabilitation. Uh, rehabilitation programs. Okay, pavement maintenance. So we cannot uh, avoid it. All pavement deteriorates over time. Uh, pavement de deteriorate at an ever increasing rate. Uh, rate at first, very few distresses are present, and the pavement stays in a relatively good condition. But at but as it age, more distress develop with each distress making it easier for the subsequent recesses to develop. Okay. So, once you have a crack, if you don't repair it, it will infiltrate. Water will infiltrate and weaken the subgrade. That's the, the whole thing that will happen. When it cracks, you need to seal it. If you don't seal it, water will get in and it will weaken the pavement structure. Additionally, in the freeze, freeze fall problems in the crack may develop and any expensive materials that get into the crack will make the crack even wider. Uh, meaning that dirt or sands. Lah. Okay. So, we, of course, lah, we don't have this, this freeze for problems in our country, but it shows that materials that gets into the crack can expand lah, and uh, elevate the uh, problem. Uh, maintenance and rehabilitation are two uh treatments used to extend pavement life one is maintenance and one is uh, rehabilitation these three treatments have two main effects immediately improve the pavement condition okay the sl slurry seal can eliminate most minor surface distresses so you provide one uh treatment just to improve but before it starts uh, getting worse like eh? Uh, you start that treatment to make sure that the problem does not go uh, further. So they affect the future rate of deterioration. Crack sealing prevents water from entering the pavement structure, which slows future deterioration. So in general, maintenance can slow the rate of deterioration by correcting small pavement defects before they worsen. And beyond a certain point, defects become too large for correction uh, by mere maintenance. So you need to rehabilitate. Okay, you can no longer uh, apply uh, maintenance because the, the crack is too, too much already. Okay, water has seeped through into the layers. So in this case, you need to re rehabilitate the pavement to effect a wholesale correction of severe defect, which provides a step increase in the pavement condition. Uh, uh, condition. So this diagram here shows the... Um, uh, the, the process of preservation and rehabilitation. So you can have a pavement rehabilitation, let's say this is years, right? 15 years, 30 years, 45 years. So instead of uh, rehabilitate or resurface the pavement every 15 years, okay, the, this is the quality of the pavement, it drops until 15 years, it drops here. And then you rehabilitate, the quality increase, and then leave you for another 15 years. Okay, then the, the quality decrease. So this cycle uh, of rehabilitation is actually more expensive compared to cycles of preservation. So you lay the, the, the new pavement here. In five years, you improve the... Uh, ini dah turun ada macam mana yang gambar ni. Patut ni satu line Preservation strategy. Yeah, five. 
pack ceiling. Ini, ini dia, dia, uh, in this diagram is actually uh, very specific. It shows the type of apa tu, preservation that needs to be done. So here you turn, apa tu, you carry out small preservation work at five years, and then the term, uh, the, the, the 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 quality still goes down, and until year ten you have one larger work micro surfacing here the tank so the quality goes up so you keep on doing this so that the quality of the pavement will always lies between 70 percent to 100 percent okay and even the cost is also uh, much lower compared to a complete rehabilitation work of the pavement 15 years uh, at a time so this is uh, the trade-off. Uh, okay? You have lots of work to do every five years and you need to do something. But in terms of cost, this is very cost effective. And in terms of uh, quality, you can see here the quality, the lowest it can go until 60%. It does not go lower than 50%. Okay? So compared to the other one here, the, 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 the quality drops after 15 years, the quality drops until, until 40%. And then you rehabilitate very expensive job going up and then leave it for another 15 years and then re rehabilitate so this is uh the scenario that we have lah. so preservation is actually much better than um longer uh, gaps of rehabilitation so left alone pavement will typically okay this is the theory lah. left alone pavement will typically deteriorate over, over time and maintenance and rehabilitation can slow or reverse this deterioration. The degree which this occurs dependent, depends on the type of maintenance works. And in general, an early systematic maintenance uh, and rehabilitation plan is the most cost effective uh, and results in the greatest extension of useful pavement life. Okay, that's the end of uh, our lecture. Do you have anything to raise or ask?